So in this video, we're going to talk about MOS capacitance or MOSFET capacitance. And specifically, we're going to take a look at the overlap capacitance. The overlap capacitance. Capa capacitance. There we go. Um, so if we draw out the MOSFET structure, we've got our, we know we've got our metal, we've got our oxide, and we've got the bulk or the substrate or the body, depending on how you're feeling that day. I'm just going to call it the, the body. Um, and we know we've got these source and drain regions. So we've got our drain region over here, which typically we apply a voltage to. We've got our source region over here. And remember, these two are in interchangeable. The distinction is somewhat arbitrary. And we've got our gate here. Uh, and each of these we apply a voltage to. And this we're going to assume is p-type. And these are both n plus, meaning they're heavily doped uh, n-type regions. And so we said that overlap capacitance is due to this little amount of overlap here. In other words, the metal and the oxide, when there's positive charges on this metal, and there's negative charges on this very close to this oxide in this N plus region, this forms a capacitor because there's an electric field between the two. And it's it's basically just a parallel plate capacitor. Now, it's clearly not a very long parallel plate capacitor, but we can still treat it, uh, at first at least, like a parallel plate capacitor with positive charges on one side, positive charges on one side, and negative charges on the other side. And we know the equation for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. So the capacitance is just equal to the permittivity of whatever material is inside. In this case, it's oxide. Uh, so this is oxide. And so the, we know the permittivity of the oxide is just equal to permittivity, permittivity of free space times the relative permittivity of the oxide. And typically, this is about 3.9 in uh, if we're talking about silicon dioxide. And we, when, when we see oxide, we are abbreviating silicon dioxide because that's typically the, the insulator that we use. So it's epsilon oxide divided by the thickness of the oxide or the height, if you will. It's this little dimension of, this little dimension here, thickness of the oxide. And these are both totally out of our control. So as designers, we don't get to control the thickness of the oxide. We don't get to control the permittivity. That's set entirely by, um, by whatever technology we're using, what manufacturer we're using. And so we typically lump this into a single parameter called C-ox, which is implicitly, it's the capacitance per unit area. So capacitance per unit area of the gate or of the oxide, oxide capacitor. Uh, and then we need to multiply all of this by the area. Or in this case, since we've got an LD here, um, part of the area of the capacitor is this length. And then the other part of the area is the width. So the width of the capacitor, or the width of the MOSFET. And we, we get to control this. We don't get to control this LD. So even more commonly, you'll see this Cox times LD grouped into a single term uh, that we call COV or C overlap. And it's kind of awkward because it's got units of farads per typically, uh, so farads per meter, or more typically femtofarads per micrometer. And you might be like, well, what is this capacitance per micron? Uh, well, it's just saying that we don't control, uh, we don't control this overlap uh, LD, we only control W. So the total capacitance uh, of these overlap capacitors is just equal to COV or this capacitance per unit length. This is a capacitance per or unit width uh, multiplied by the width of the, of the uh, transistor. And so this is our overlap capacitance. This is typically, typically you'll be given this value COV or you'll be given LD. Uh, and COX, in which case you'll need to figure out uh, which, what COV is, or maybe you'll be given just the thickness of the oxide and the permittivity of the oxide. Any one of these you can calculate 
uh, you can calculate the capacitance from. But in my experience, this is the most typical form, and it's also the strangest, which is why I went over it. And so this capacitance, uh, this is the capacitance between the drain, uh, so between the drain and the gate, this capacitance here. Well, that's that's a little messy. Let me draw that in a different color so it's more visible. This is the capacitance between the drain and the gate. So this is CGD. And similarly, we've got a capacitor over here that's the same exact uh, same exact analysis involved. So this this capacitor here we call CGS. And I'm going to call it CGS. Uh, I'm going to call these both CGS overlap and CGD overlap because there's other components to CGS and CGD that we will we will see later. So both CGS overlap and CGD overlap are equal to this uh, overlap capacitance per unit width multiplied by the width of the transistor. And again, the reason we have it in this somewhat awkward form. Uh, I'll write it out in its entirety just underneath. Uh, it's the permittivity of the oxide divided by the thickness of the oxide times this overlap length times the width. This is the this is the complete form. You just probably won't see it in this form much because uh, LD can be hard to measure and hard to predict, whereas this COV, this is more measurable because we can adjust the width of any given transistor and then measure the capacitance. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.